Stayallday.com. The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. Uh, this is for the player who is playing college basketball right now. You still have some games to play or seasons to play, and you already have overseas basketball on your mind. I want to tell you the most important thing you can do to get yourself you know, best uh, positioned to play basketball overseas. The most important thing you can do is play really good in the games and get all your game film from it. Now, being that I'm recording this video in 2020, getting game film from your games is pretty much ubiquitous now. Every game is filmed, everybody films everything, so you don't even have to worry about going and you know, hunting down your game film. Believe it or not, there was a time when, when I was graduating from college, I had to go try to find my game films because we used to film on these things called, uh, v, v, what were they called? Camcorders. And they had these little VHS tape. It was like a physical tape. And it was only that tape. So if you didn't have that tape, you didn't have your own game film. Believe it or not, some of y'all not even old enough to know what I'm talking about. But that's how it used to be not even 20 years ago. But nowadays, all y'all games are all filmed. The school that I went to where we were like that, now they live stream every single game. You can just download your film off a damn YouTube. But anyway, all that being said, before I go deeper into this, make sure you please leave a like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment letting us know that we're giving you value here at Overseas Basketball Blueprint. And if you listen to this on a podcast app, on an Apple app, please leave a review and a rating of the show to let Apple, your friends, other ball players, and us know that we are giving you value when it comes to playing ball overseas. So all that being said, uh, when it comes to uh, college players right now, what can you do to get started and be ready is have good stats, be on a winning team, uh, make sure that you leave a positive impression, not only on your own teammates and coaches, but also on the teams that you play against. All right, don't be out there getting technical fouls, arguing with the refs, things like that, because listen, I have friends who are college basketball coaches and their players, when they graduate from those guys' teams, they want to go play pro basketball overseas. And one of my guys, his name's Wes Pfeiffer, he coaches at a, a D2, a, a high level D2. And he said there are players on his team who have signed to play overseas, who graduated, and the overseas teams would reach out to him. And they would reach out to other teams in the conference about that player, and they would ask, what was his attitude like? You know, how did he show up every day? What was he like in practice? What was his energy when your team lost a game? How did his teammates respond to him? These are the things that overseas teams are asking. They weren't asking things like, what's his vertical? How many points did he average? You know, can he shoot a three-pointer? Listen, they can find that out by watching some footage. What they want to know are the intangibles, the things that you can't see on film. What was the things that I just said? Your energy every day in practice. Uh, what were you like? Were you respectful of your professors in school? Like, did you show up to class all the time? Were you ever academically ineligible because you just didn't do your academic work? Uh, again, what was your energy when the team lost the game? How did you feel when you made a mistake. How'd you respond when you made a mistake or the ref missed the call? Did you keep playing or were you just complaining to the refs? Were you getting technical fouls? Things like that. These are the kind of things that overseas teams look into when they're looking at players like you. So, of course, on the court, you need to do your thing. I mean, I don't need to tell you that if you're watching a video about playing overseas. You need to do your thing on the court. Put up, know your good stats, help your team win games. Next, let me make sure I'm saying that right. Put up good stats in the process of helping your team win. So help your team win, and while you're doing that, you will get stats. So if you're a rebounder and grabbing rebounds helps the team, grab rebounds. If you're a scorer and your role is to score, then you score. But the purpose of scoring is not to make yourself look good. It's to help the team, and you're going to look good in the process. So let me make sure I'm being clear and clarify that. That is not just about you know, get stats for yourself and just focus on you so you can go play overseas because if you're selfish, people will note that too and they will let that overseas team know who's looking into you and they might end up not signing you because they heard that you were selfish. Maybe they heard that from too many people. So make sure that you are doing your thing on the court now and if you do that, here's what's going to happen. If you're doing your thing on the court, when you graduate or even before your career is over, you're going to have agents reaching out to you or your family or whoever about, hey, we think you no know, player X you no, know, Joe can play overseas. We think he can or she can play professionally overseas. I'm an agent. I want to represent them when they graduate from college. They might be talking to your mom or your dad or your uncle or whoever's your representative while you finish out your season. And that person is already going to be working behind the scenes, working the phones to get you a deal or get you an offer while you're still in college. You might not even graduate yet and you might not even be up with your eligibility yet, but they're already working on getting you a deal because they see what you can do. So, 
this is why it's so important that you do your thing in school. So for all you players out there, because a lot of players will come to me and they'll ask me things. I'm talking to the college players right now. They'll come to me and they'll ask me things like, Dre, you know, how do I get an agent? Or I just need an opportunity or something like that. And you end up having to go the you know, academy or exposure camp or tryout route because you didn't do enough in college that your college performance alone can get you a job. I didn't do enough in college and my college performance alone could get me a job. So I had to do those things. Like I talked about in the previous uh, episode, academy versus tryout versus exposure camp. Listen, you do your thing well enough in college, you won't even have to make that decision because your performance in college will work for you, will speak for you. Then an agent will want to represent you because, listen, agents look around. They know. I did an interview with an agent named Kevin Tarka. And his whole thing is, look, he looks, he scouts players who are playing in college and says, which one of these players look like they could play pro that I can help? And he scouts them out and he'll reach out to them while they're in college or their family or whatever to represent them because he knows he can help them get a job. And that's what he does. He looks for them. They don't come to him. He comes to them because he knows what he needs. And that's what agents do. So you players who are playing in college right now, do your thing on the court and you know, present yourself properly on and off the court, win or loss, present yourself the right way, and agents will come to you because they know that you're a player who can you know, make money, earn money playing overseas, and you make money, they make money. It's a win-win situation. So those players right now who are in high school or any level of schooling, and you're wondering how can you play overseas, what are you doing in school right now? Do that. I'm talking about basketball-wise, what are you doing in school? And you already know, we don't have to talk about it too much, you don't do your thing in the classroom, you can't play when you're in school. All right, so do we need to discuss that? I don't think so. If you can't handle that part, hire yourself a tutor, do what you need to do. All right, you get your, get your girlfriend to help you to study. One of your teammates who got good grades, go study with them. Whatever they're doing, you start doing it. But don't blow your hooping opportunity because you can't go to class and you don't have the discipline to handle that part. Then you'll just blow everything. You'll blow all your talent on that. So make sure you don't make that mistake. I ain't even got to talk about that that much but all the players out there who are out of school and you want to play overseas but you don't have that college resume to work for you listen you got to do what i talked about in the previous episode but if you are in college please do everything that you can so that you don't have to make the choice of academy exposure camp tryout and make a whole lot of things a whole lot easier for you and i know a lot of players who things were much easier for them to play overseas because they had put that work in in college but if you don't then you already know what your options are. All that being said, balloverseas.com. Get yourself your free copy of this book, The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. The book is already paid for. All you do is cover the shipping. Everything you need to know to get started playing professional basketball overseas. I'll have players from all levels of college ball read this book. I know them personally. D1 players, D2, D3, JUCO, NAIA, high school, players who are out of school, players in their 20s and 30s who just want to go play overseas have read this book. Every level, every background you could think of, a ball player who wants to play overseas has read this book. That's an absolute fact. Get this book, balloverseas.com, so you can go play overseas right now and get your career started. Work on your game. Dre, all.